In 1987, in the town of Midland, Texas, an 18-month-old girl fell 22 feet into an 8-inch wide well casing. Her name was Jessica Morales McClure. For the next 58 hours, rescue workers struggled feverishly to free Jessica from her accidental tomb. Known as Baby Jessica, millions watched her rescue on live television. The toddler's ordeal captured the attention of global media and the hearts of strangers. For nearly three days, the world held its breath. Everyone could imagine the intense pain and fear she was going through. Thousands cheered her subsequent rescue. What a relief it was when baby Jessica was returned safely to the loving arms of her mother and father. President Ronald Reagan said, everybody in America became godfathers and godmothers of Jessica while this was going on. It was a happy ending to a very desperate situation. What if Jessica had been your child? Would you have expected any less of those who rescued her? In those few days, the world came together in caring for a child who had fallen into a well. Parents and rescue workers wept. They devoted every last ounce of effort to getting that child out of the ground. What a joyful transformation came to society as the little girl was finally returned to the surface. It brought out the best in everyone. No decent adult would hesitate to run to the rescue of a child who is drowning or injured. And yet the world is full of children in peril, but we do not see them. More than 100 million children around the planet face the same sorts of peril that baby Jessica experienced. Some are tortured by abuse. Many are in utter despair and hopelessness. Their cries are not heard. Fortunately, they are not entirely forgotten. A special group of men and women go to the rescue of these children. They are beacons of hope. Humanitarians are rescuers who demonstrate what Jesus told his disciples. Let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Christ-like love requires work, often hard, difficult work. It is about commitment and sacrifice. Nowhere else is the work of love more vital than in the rescue of children at risk. Many children suffer from extreme neglect and abuse. They are victims of cruelty and exploitation. Violence, crime, and addiction pervade their lives. These children are not capable of helping themselves. They require the intervention of benevolent adults who demonstrate the power of love that can change their lives for the better. As children are treated, so they are apt to become as adults. Without love, a person, whether as a child or an adult, is doomed to a life of abject misery or a life of crime. What if it was your son or daughter? Street children constitute the worst of human injustice. There are more than 100 million street children around the world, with 40 million in Latin America. These are children and juveniles who perform hazardous or menial labor for almost nothing in order to support their families. Many are children who belong to dysfunctional families, where brutality is the norm. Some are resented, unwanted, and forced to fend for themselves. Whatever the reasons, children who end up on the street face the most horrible conditions. They become prey to child molesters or others who exploit them sexually. Typically, they are regarded as throwaway kids. Crime becomes their only recourse to survival. Many become drug addicts and drug dealers. They join street gangs. This only increases the animosity of the public against them, leading to social isolation and police persecution. Like miners trapped in a cave, they yearn for a beacon to dispel the gloom and lead them to safety.
What if it was your child? Are you able to love other children as you love your own? Great courage is needed in reaching out to those trapped in the darkness of fear, loneliness, and crime. Unnoticed are the valiant priests and nuns, social workers, therapists, teachers, coaches, and ordinary people who demonstrate extraordinary charity. They follow a vision of humanitarian service in providing hope to adolescents who endure the greatest misery. They bring the light of love to those who have known only rejection and abuse. Where are you at? Good. Yeah, one other thing. My wife and I are here in Mexico City to bring donated clothes and items to Nacimiento. My name is Neil Millman. I'm a cultural geographer and a social entrepreneur. For many years, I have studied the problems of street children. My nonprofit foundation, Love at Work, seeks ways of rescuing and rehabilitating these victims of social injustice. In particular, we seek out exceptional child welfare advocates. We also provide opportunities for volunteers to serve the needy. Along with my wife, Margarita, we have assisted several shelters in Mexico and Colombia. Our purpose is to facilitate the humanitarian work started by great social welfare advocates. One such beacon of hope was Alejandro Garcia Duran. Affectionately known as Father Chinchichoma, Duran was a Catholic priest who went against convention to provide direct assistance to homeless children in Mexico City. For nearly 30 years, he rescued kids from the street and defended them against persecution. He turned abandoned buildings into shelters and demonstrated to the youth how to live a more decent and productive life. This humble priest was a great child welfare advocate who paved the way for others to follow. <laughs> Professor Jose Vallejo is a man of the same mold. Vallejo gave his life savings to keeping Father Chinchichoma's shelter going when it faced imminent closure. As the current director of the Rebirth Foundation, he continues to give countless hours of leadership. He does so without salary, while still teaching law at a local university. His influence upon abused and abandoned children is truly incredible. Under his kind and wise mentoring, many young men and women have gone on to lives of accomplishment. Two men who have continued to live at the shelter for more than 10 years now undertake much of the day-to-day -day operation of the shelter. Colleen attended university and is earning a degree in social work. Olaya also grew up in the Ecuador house. He is an energetic leader who motivates the residents with his enthusiastic personality. The two men are responsible for helping Dr. Vallejo plan and conduct the annual Street Olympics. This three-week event enables street youth to engage in a variety of sports activities that develop their athletic abilities and improve their behavior. Their self-esteem is elevated as they learn teamwork, personal development, and interaction with the community. From Professor Vallejo, Colleen and Olaya are learning how to become beacons to those in darkness. These exceptional former street kids have become street lights that provide guidance and inspiration to children coming in from the street. It is not easy to work with kids from the street. They require a lot of understanding and patience. But the dividends are worth every sacrifice. When street children succeed in overcoming problems with drugs and bad behavior, they can become contributing members of society. 
good citizens. As steel is tempered under extreme heat and pressure, and as gold is refined by removing the dross, so these adolescents have been tested in the furnace of affliction. They are capable of making much from their challenges. They use their street smarts to teach other children how to survive their hardships. As recovering addicts, they possess the practical wisdom and hope that can inspire others. Like lights on the street, they dispel darkness. They represent the possibilities of reform. It is a fortunate thing that most young children have the resilience to enable them to overcome the traumas that they experience. With a little guidance, encouragement, and opportunities for improvement, they can blossom, even excel. They are masters of survival who can put their street smarts to beneficial use. An adolescent who graduates from the street is in a position to affect many other street kids for the better. Such a young man or woman becomes a street light. Like a light in any darkened neighborhood, they are capable of attracting and protecting younger children in need of help. Street lights are more commonly known as street educators. These are street children who are taking the final steps toward recovery from abuse, crime, and addiction. As they regain control of their own lives, so they learn the power of trust. Trust provides confidence in themselves and in other benevolent individuals. As street educators develop dependability, they become role models to those who struggle for improvement. Street lights become heroes to those who have lost hope in life. I'm fine, thanks. Oh, oh street handshake. When does he go to the school? In one, uh, one hour. <laughs> in oh. one hour. You go to school in one hour yes. to study English. Right? Good. Yes. Such is the case with Miguel Angel Carrillo, a dynamic young man who ran away from home at age six to escape physical and emotional abuse. He is a survivor who for 10 years roamed the streets performing household chores to earn a meal. He drifted in and out of shelters that could not provide him with a means of real improvement. More than anything else, Miguel wanted to learn, but obtaining a formal education was only a dream until he met Professor Vallejo and discovered the services the Rebirth Foundation provide. There he was given moral leadership and the right to attend school. Miguel, however, had a lot of catching up to do and some bad habits to overcome. It took time, but through persistence and hard work, Miguel Angel began to develop qualities that have made him a true leader. My son! <laughs> because they follow you. Because at that time we were like a, a group of 12, 15 guys. Like a small gang. Yeah, exactly, you know? And, and I, I don't want to say I was the leader or uh -huh. the boss, mm -hmm. you know? But everyone, what I, I had, all the time I had this kind of good ideas. thinking. Yeah, good ideas, yeah. you know, for the wrong thing or for the, for the good things. <laughs> good ideas or bad things, ideas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? So when I, sometimes when I said, okay, we quit drugs. We tried, we really tried, you know? We mm -hmm. were like a group. Uh -huh. We were really trying, you know. And one moment I was like, oh, no, it's too much, I can't. So I, I heard you say, I, I get laughs. back to drugs, yeah, exactly, and everyone. So I yet to recognize that, you know. Uh -huh. So he said, you have to quit drugs, man, this is the moment. But you know, as a father, I saw, I, I saw him as a father, and now I see him as a father. Uh -huh. So I think it's the mistakes that you have to, to do to learn about it, you know. Uh, uh -huh. Now I said that. Now, many times I make many mistakes, but it was always the same yeah. with drugs. With drugs. You know? And it was the reason why I never learned about it. You know? I, I just knew that I had to quit. Mm -hmm. But now I said, 
We, we can make mistakes, doesn't matter, but we have to learn about it. Mm -hmm. It's a process. It depends how you learn about this process. Miguel Angel did not take his rehabilitation for granted. He has a capacity for learning anything, and he possesses the ambition to escape the street forever. By attending workshops at the Ecuador House, he learned such things as computer skills, baking, acting, and printing. On one occasion, Miguel met a visitor from Germany who agreed to teach him German. Furthermore, this man was a fencing coach who taught Miguel the ancient art of sword play. Miguel Angel Carrillo entered a national fencing competition and won first place. He was awarded a one-year scholarship to study in Germany. Subsequently, Miguel Angel spent five years in Europe. He worked for two years in Ireland and became engaged to a beautiful French woman. Miguel Angel now speaks four languages and has seen the world, all without even graduating from high school. Miguel Angel Creo is a street light, not because he escaped the pull of the street, but because he still cares for those trapped in darkness. They are his brothers and sisters. Miguel is a hero at the Ecuador House, and naturally, he is especially popular with the girls. Miguel's affable temperament was especially evident when he was introduced to another beacon of hope for the first time. They had a very synergistic conversation. Gabriel Gonzalez is a, is a citizen who takes it upon himself to help the destitute. He runs a small appliance repair shop in a dangerous area and employs recovering drug addicts and alcoholics like Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos also ran away from home at a young age and grew up on the street. Rather than getting drawn into crime, however, Juan Carlos survived by performing simple chores for small businesses. He was also a protector and a group leader for younger street children. Now he is grateful to earn a small salary from a man who treats him as a human being. De mi lado, después dije, a ver, yo soy un chavo de calle, hay varios que escuchamos eso allí, decimos, a ver, entonces, ¿por qué tanta gente nos pide que le echemos ganas si eso es nuestro único destino? Así es. Y es gente que sabe, que tiene libros, no recuerdo el nombre, maldito yo, pero increíble. ¿eh? Realmente te, te encasilla en un lugar y eso es para lo que va a ser dirigido. Sí. Es igual que la televisión, la televisión para qué te sirve. Si realmente compras todo lo que te venden ahí, terminas distancia. Aquí realmente no, no, no se la acaba, lo criticamos porque bueno, luego, la mancha ahora te pintas, este, la te pones la oreja, te perforas, te pintas de... Espérate, te lo están vendiendo, no te dejes manipular por el sistema. Y si realmente vas, te dejas manipular. Gabriel knows that helping the poor means more than doing a good thing. It is good business. He has a reputation in the community. People can go to him for guidance and protection. More important, Gabriel utilizes a pay it forward principle that gives individuals the means of improving themselves. He knows that it is not enough merely to give a man a fish to feed him for a day. By teaching a man how to fish, that man can then feed himself for a lifetime. Furthermore, he can feed others and teach them how to fish. And they accomplish this by turning on street lights who prove what can be achieved. So, como al estrado hablar en la conferencia, y había estado con un auditorio, y dijo, para los niños de la calle, solo hay tres salidas. La locura, la cárcel, o la muerte. ¿Y sabes por qué? Porque ahí, en ese auditorio, no había niños de la calle. Solo la gente que sabía que estudiaba. En otros lugares, de repente, ves a un chavo de calle, y oye, esto no es normal, ¿qué pasa? ¿No? Y, y ves a... un poquito más, más, este, en mejores condiciones. Sí, ahora sí, pero realmente, ¿cómo forma el secretario de un joven que de repente digo, le vendes? Ya no? Gabriel is an ordinary man who does extraordinary things. What makes him different is that he is proactive. He is living proof that a citizen need not be rich, professional, or academically qualified to help the poor. His beacon is generated from within, and it is seen by many. So it is with anyone who truly wishes to change the world. Learning self-reliance is a critical factor in any individual's development. Hope leads to actual improvement. This is the illuminating truth that all beacons of hope provide to the poor. They help the poor see that their lives do have value and meaning.
Not every young man is as gifted as Miguel Angel, Olaya, or Colleen. For some kids, it is enough just to escape from poverty. They have no wish to face more of the challenges of street life, nor should they be expected to. But when an exceptional street child chooses to become a street light, then he or she stands in a position to affect tremendous social change. Empowering such an individual can result in the exponential rescue of hundreds of children at risk. Helping drug addicts and street children requires more than good intentions and a few dollars. They are capable of doing much for themselves when given the means of doing so. They need leaders they can respect and relate to. A recovering addict can do more to help other addicts than someone who has never struggled with such challenges. As the old saying goes, it takes a thief to catch a thief. Jose Betancur of Medellin, Colombia was once a drug addict and a drug dealer in the United States. After being arrested, he was deported back to Colombia. There he faced a critical decision. Either he could continue to destroy his own life and those who loved him, or he could overcome his addiction. He turned his life over to the light of the world, Jesus Christ. By the grace of God, Jose's addiction was put into remission. His life became a living miracle as he continued to work out his redemption by helping others to overcome their addictions. He created Semilla que crece, or Seed That Grows. His foundation helps addicts to nourish the giant trees dormant within themselves. His halfway house is a community of up to 20 men of all ages who rely upon one another for support and guidance. <laughs> here are my friends, my family. Yeah. Yeah, my family here, my brothers. Okay, what is your name? My name is Joaquin. Joaquin, how old are you, Joaquin? Uh, 30, uh, 34. 34 years old. What is your name? My name is Oscar. Oscar, how old are you, Oscar? Quantos años? 27. No, 27. 27. Queremos rápidamente aprender todas esas áreas de nuestra vida, aprender todo ese conocimiento. Queremos entrar a la vida. Me siento muy bien. Muchas gracias a ustedes por estar aquí con nosotros. Excelente muchachos, eh, una motivación primeramente para mí y para ustedes. Motivémonos cada día más, hermano, no nos dejemos llenar la cabeza con caracha, no. Vamos para adelante, se están abriendo muchas puertas, se van a abrir muchas más, veremos cosas mayores en el Señor. Y un momentico, un pequeño hombre y los que van al curso, ahora por la tarde voy a ir a averiguar eso, entonces para que se acerquen los que están interesados en los cursos. Diego is one of the residents. He manages much of the operation of the shelter and is a brilliant street light to those vulnerable to unruly desires and unsure hopes. An important part of gaining self-control lies in providing service to the destitute. Twice a week, Betancur, along with his young daughter Anita, with Diego and other men from the shelter, go to the mean streets of Medellin to feed the homeless and the drug addicts. Like moths drawn to a candle, Homeless families, street kids, drug addicts, and prostitutes come to get their bellies filled. As they eat, they are also invited to learn how to overcome their addictions. Addiction is a hungry beast that subjects the sufferer to the worst torment and enslavement. I witnessed this firsthand as I saw a young man counseling with Betancur. A short time afterwards, he returned after selling his shirt for a dollar to buy drugs. Within an hour, he returned again after selling his pants also for a dollar. Only a former addict like Betancur or Diego could persuade such an individual to take the steps necessary to avert eventual calamity. The service that Jose Betancur provides to drug addicts is invaluable. It is a perfect example of a grassroots 
bottom-up approach to solving social problems. Every day, the men meet together in group sessions to face their addictions and to support one another toward recovery. They do so through genuine faith and love. Prayer is an essential part of their redemption process. Amen! Amen! Todo lo que ellos recopilaron de, de filósofos diferentes y de psicólogos que es la filosofía que tiene Claré y todo y, y todos estos realmente está más pura en la Biblia, entonces como no va a ser más, es mucho mejor. The Bible is The Bible has everything good in it. Samia K. Crece, however, is not limited only to helping drug addicts. It also works with the mayor's task force in providing assistance to the poor and children at risk. It is a very productive form of social outreach that cures illness, reunites families, and creates leadership. Amigos! Hasta mañana. Sí. Vaya, cada día vaya con Dios. Siempre. Amén. Sí. Amén. Adiós. Problems of crime and homelessness are not restricted to urban areas. In the countryside of many developing countries, hunger stalks the land. Rural families, often large and uneducated, find it difficult to feed their children more than a meal a day. Parents sometimes take their eldest child to the city and tell him he's now on his own. Other children may be sold or abandoned closer to home. Recognizing this problem was a young Catholic priest named Jose Ricardo Rosso. Like Father Chinchichoma, he started a shelter named Amigos de la Alegría, or Friends of Happiness. It is located in a town about 30 miles from Medellin. Unfortunately, Father Rosso did not have the blessing of living a long life. At the age of 42, he died suddenly, leaving the shelter in limbo. The mantle of leadership was taken up by one of the boys who had learned much from the priest's example. Gabriel Restrepo now directs the shelter that provides for upwards of 90 young boys. The facilities are modern, clean, and well organized. The boys are fed, educated, provided spiritual guidance, taught job skills and self reliance, and given recreational opportunities. This state of the art shelter is permeated with the laughter of vivacious children. The real miracle is that Restrepo accomplishes this without the benefit of an advanced education. Clearly, Restrepo applies his God-given talents to the best of his ability. The children acknowledge this with their gratitude. This is especially the case with Daniel. He is like a pet that shadows Gabriel wherever he goes. Daniel was rescued after living in a kennel with dogs for seven years. When social workers rescued Daniel from the kennel, he was so dirty and covered with sores that at first he was mistaken for a black boy. Developmentally challenged, Daniel is finally learning to talk and shows little evidence of the unspeakable horrors that he suffered. Thankfully, he is a loving child who is catching up on his propensity for play. ¿Quién es? <laughs> Eso. ¿Cómo se llaman ustedes? Tú. ¿Cómo se llaman? Él es de Vinacio, yo y él es de la. Hola. ¿Sí? Sebastián Luis. Ok, Luis. ¿Cómo te dice? David Suárez. ¿Cómo se llama? Por favor. Oh. David. David. ¿Usted? Diego. Diego. Tú. Diego. David. Otra. David. Tú. ¿Cómo se llama? Yo me llamo Martínez Cano. Y yo me llamo Juanda. One cannot meet these children without feeling both deeply humbled and joyful. It is good to know that they have been rescued from the most 
deplorable conditions and that they are not merely being warehoused. Gabriel Restrepo is an exceptional leader who sets the standard for children's advocacy. His beacon is igniting the spirits of children who previously thought they were worth nothing. In looking into the eyes of his healthy boys, there is no doubt that they too will become streetlights and beacons to subsequent generations of street children. ¿Cómo se llama el chico? Hola tía, mi nombre es Edison Rueda. Yo estoy acá en la fundación hace siete años porque mi mamá no me puede mantener en la casa. Ella trabaja y, y estoy muy, muy feliz de estar acá porque acá nos dan la comida, el estudio, la dormida y nos enseñan a, a soldar y, a, y, a, y a, a manejar los computadores. Y muchas gracias. Muchas gracias a usted. Mi nombre es Edgar, yo llevo cinco años de estar aquí en la fundación, estoy en el grado cuarto. Yo estoy aquí porque no tengo ni mamá ni papá. Cuando, mi ma cuando yo nací, mi papá me dejó y a mi mamá la mataron. Yo estoy aquí porque, bueno, entonces, porque yo estaba acá porque Galo y Doña Miriam me aceptaron a mí. Y porque Galo me ayuda a soldar, nos enseña a los computadores. Entonces yo estoy muy feliz de tenerlos a ustedes y feliz día. In the rat race of everyday life, it is easy to overlook the advocates who are plumbing the shadows of despair. They need our support even as we need their moral leadership. President Gordon B. Hinckley said that it is not enough just to be good. We must be good for something. Advocates and other humanitarians are rushing to the rescue of the needy. They need all the help they can get. Helping the poor and the needy is not a responsibility reserved only for special humanitarians. It is a social obligation and a Christian duty. We can save our own families and mend the broken families of others. But doing so requires light, a lot of light. That light must be turned on within ourselves. Pero, pero no, pero te puede estar donde esté. Y esa parte que dice, o sea, la parte sana que tenemos, el, 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 los bandos sanos, porque hay unos bandos ahí y otros bandos sanos, pero los bandos sanos deben ser espirituales. In a modern day revelation to Joseph Smith, the Lord declared, Verily I say, men should be anxiously engaged in a good cause, and do many things of their own free will, and bring to pass much righteousness. For the power is in them, wherein they are agents unto themselves. And inasmuch as men do good, they shall in no wise lose their reward. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. There is little excuse for standing on the sidelines when there is so much work to be done. There are baby Jessicas everywhere, crying out for someone to come to their rescue. Imagine the results if all of us lifted our lanterns and went in search of the missing sheep. We should continually ask ourselves, what if it was my child? 